So how do I simplify it? Well, I simplify it by taking a look at this picture, which you'll commonly see, and saying, how much of this do I really need to know? Because that's a lot to remember all of this. And I break it down to this. There's three or four major things that I need to know. The front of our brain is fed by an artery called the anterior cerebral artery. I can remember that. The anterior part of the brain is fed by the anterior part. What's the middle part fed by? Easily enough, the middle part is fed by the middle, middle cerebral artery. And what's the posterior part fed by? It's fed by the posterior cerebral artery. Okay, that's easy. Anterior, middle, and posterior. I can do that. Are there any other parts? Yes. There's the basilar and there's the vertebral. And if you know those, you're doing pretty well as well. So if you can remember those, anterior, middle, posterior, easily. And then basilar is sort of the base of the brain. And then if you go down really far, I think about C7 is down here. And that's the, the prominent vertebra, which is at the bottom of the brain. The blood vessel doesn't quite it's not anatomically contiguous with C7, but I just imagine C7, this vertebrae that sticks out, <laughs> as the bottom of it all, so that's the vertebral or the base. How do I remember how that looks? Well, I remember that it looks like a person. And if you draw a person with some antenna and with these sort of big ear hairs sticking out, then we come down, they've got arms, they've got the spine with ribs, and they've got some legs. So if you want to remember how this whole thing works, like this is called the Circle of Willis, and then the, the uh, arteries that feed into the Circle of Willis, then you remember that you draw a little person. So draw their head, that's the Circle of Willis. You've got the anterior cerebral arteries up here, that's the antenna. You've got the middle cerebral arteries, which incidentally is where most strokes happen. So that classic presentation that you've been taught in school of, you know, <laughs> person having a stroke like that, that presentation is a MCA CVA, Middle Cerebral Artery, Cerebral Vascular Accident. So when we're talking about strokes, most often in a paramedic class, if you're not going into the sort of depth that we go into here, people say strokes look like this. Like when they talk about the FAST test, FAST test is classic for MCA. It'll pick up the other ones too, but it really is oriented for an MCA CVA. So we've got the antenna, anterior, the big ears, middle cerebral artery, middle of the circle of Willis, it's easy enough. And then coming down here, sort of out of basically right out of the neck, because the PCA does actually attach to the circle of Willis, is the posterior cerebral artery. And we can think of those as the arms. Now, let me be clear. The ACA does not perfuse the antenna in a human being. I'm talking about the diagram here. And the MCA does not perfuse the ears in a human being. I'm just saying for purposes of this diagram, this is a way to remember that it looks like a person. <laughs> so the posterior cerebral arteries, which actually should really connect with the top of the neck here, uh, are what we would pretend to be the arms. And then we've got this basilar artery, which is analogous to the spine in this diagram that I've given. And these little arteries that come out are the pontine arteries. They look like ribs in this diagram. And they perfuse the pons, which is down in the bottom of the brain in the brainstem and is really important for a lot of the functioning, a lot of the autonomic functioning inside our body. A lot of the stuff that happens automatically happens in the medulla and the pons, which are both in the brainstem. Uh, so that's the basilar artery with the pontine arteries going off to the pons here. And then we've got the vertebral arteries, which also help feed into the brainstem. Let me so that's the basic idea. Let me introduce another slight complication on this. This is the PCA, the posterior cerebral artery, and we talk about that as the posterior one. But when we talk about these other ones here, the vertebral basilar arteries, this whole section, that's sometimes considered part of the posterior circulation as well. So we say there's the posterior cerebral artery, and then there is the pontine arteries, the basilar arteries, and the vertebral arteries, which are also part of the posterior circulation. So basically, from, from the circle of Willis down, all of that stuff is called the posterior uh, territory of circulation. But don't mistake all of this being the posterior with the posterior cerebral artery. I hope that makes sense. So that's our circulation. And obviously, 
If we have a blood vessel burst, a hemorrhagic CVA, or if we have a blood vessel get clogged, <clears throat> then, and that's a, a ischemic CVA, then it's going to happen in one of these blood vessels. And if we know where these blood vessels perfuse and what parts of the brain those blood vessels are perfusing, we can have a bit of a clinical suspicion about where that CVA might be occurring. But again, we cannot know definitively without proper radiography, without proper imaging done by CT in an eMERGE or in a van. Let's take a look <clears throat> another way of the broad general areas that the anterior, middle, and posterior, posterior cerebral arteries perfuse in the brain. If we take a look at the legend down here, we can say the anterior cerebral artery is uh, perfusing all the parts of the brain that are in yellow. The middle cerebral artery are perfusing the parts that are in red or pinky red. And the posterior cerebral artery uh, perfuses all the stuff here in blue. And I have actually added in a little bit of blue down here in the brain stem. So that's the medulla and the pons down in the brain stem because this is part of the posterior circulation but it's not from the part that's from the posterior coronary artery. It's from the vertebral and the basilar and the pontine arteries. So when we take a look at this, you can see, interestingly, that if the uh, primary motor cortex is coming down here in the brain, that central part of the primary motor cortex, and here in the very middle, is perfused by the anterior cerebral artery. So if we go back to the slide of the parkour kid falling over the wall, then we know that the anterior cerebral artery is perfusing the inside here, which would be leading from their feet all the way up to their hips and a little bit of their torso as well. <clears throat> and the outer part here of the um, primary motor cortex, which is the part that comes down, is more the, uh, the hands and the face, the upper limbs and the face, and the tongue and the larynx. So in broad terms now, we can start to look at the geography. The anterior cerebral artery feeds the primary motor cortex that um, innervates the bottom part of the body, and the middle cerebral artery feeds the part of the primary cortex which, which um, in, nervously speaking, innervates the upper part of the body. And so when we talk, here we go, when we talk about the classic presentation of a stroke, we talk about their face, we talk about their arms, but we don't generally talk about their legs because when we talk about strokes in paramedic classrooms, generally what we're talking about is an MCA CVA, a middle cerebral artery CVA. And the middle cerebral artery controls or feeds the part of the primary motor cortex that does the arms and the legs. See? So that's why we're typically talking about an MCA CVA in the class. Would it be possible to have a CVA that just affects the lower part of the body? Not quite, because there's anastomosis between the, the there's the crossover perfusion between the regions of the primary motor cortex that are fed by the ACA and the MCA. So they're, they're never really classically pure strokes, like it's just your legs, or it's just your arms, or it's just your larynx. There tends to be a bit of an overlap. But if somebody is having weakness bilaterally in one leg and a little bit of involved arm weakness and maybe a little bit of, you know, facial, you start to think to yourself, well, that could be an anterior CVA, anterior cerebral artery CVA. But if they've got the classic arm and face, then you start to think to yourself, that's more classically middle cerebral artery. And if they have, as I'm talking in very general terms, if they have a really weird presentation, which doesn't make sense in terms of arms or legs, that's when we start to think about posterior. So maybe somebody would just um, lose vision in one eye or they're smelling funny smells or, you know, something like that. We'll talk more about PCA and uh, CVA. But that's roughly how we start to break them up. Those are the big sort of categories. Oops, let's keep going. <laughs> so what about these arterial regions of the brain? Why do we care about where the arteries feed in? Well, I just kind of covered that. So the, cere the cerebral cortex and most of the primary motor cortex is mostly supplied by the middle cerebral artery. And the brain stem, particularly the pons, remember the pontine arteries, is mostly supplied by the posterior cerebral artery and the vertebral basilar arteries. So that's all together, the vertebral basilar and the posterior 
cerebral artery are called posterior circulation. Let's take a look at some of this basic anatomy. So this is reviewing a little bit. There's the front of a person's brain, there's the back of the brain, and we're looking down from the top. And what I've highlighted here is, you should know, the primary motor cortex. And if we look at that from the side, it would look like this area here is the primary motor cortex. So this slide is looking at the, the uh, sagittal section of the brain. How does that look? I'm going to draw a quick schematic here. I've already drawn. I'm going to present a quick schematic diagram here. Here is this slice of bread from our brain, which we have as the primary motor cortex. Now, the legs here aren't being shown quite coming down, and they should be. Um, but this is legs, hips, arms coming down, face, tongue, and larynx. We have neurons that come from there down into, and obviously this is not uh, to scale, <clears throat> because the pons is much smaller, but I'm drawing it this way as a template for the rest of the presentation, and I need a bit of room in the pons. So I've made the pons, which is down in the brainstem down here, very big, and underneath the pons we have the medulla oblongata down here, and that's very big as well. So the blue of the pons is the blue here, and the green of the uh, medulla oblongata is the green there, and the red of the primary motor cortex is the red and the red. So all of that is our brain, and it goes down to our body. And that's kind of the schemata, the base diagram that we need to understand how things can go wrong. Because the nerves from the primary motor cortex come down through the pons, uh, sometimes to the medulla oblongata, one or the other usually, and then down, well, no, they do go through both, but their connecting stations, which we'll talk about in a second, either connect in the pons and the medulla and then down to the body. So the neurons go primary motor cortex, pons, medulla, down to the body. And it's problems in those nerves that manifest in our body, and that's what we see clinically. So we look at what's wrong with the body, we realize what nerves feed that part of the body, and where those nerves connect back to on the primary motor cortex. So we look at this bit, and we work backwards through the wiring to whatever part of the primary motor cortex it is. And then knowing where in the primary motor cortex the lesion is, we can tell which artery is uh, being affected with either hemorrhagic or ischemic CVA, and that will help us understand the cause of the hemiplegia. So that's the big picture. That's from, you know, 10,000 meters. What are we thinking about <clears throat> in terms of what's going on inside the body? So let's move on a little bit here and take a look at what happens in the upper facial part. So we're talking about basically above the eyes. What is the wiring that perfuses above our eyes? And then we'll go on to what's the wiring that perfuses our face below our eyes? And then what's the wiring that goes to the rest of our body? Three major sections that the wiring goes to. And they're wired slightly differently. So we look at those regions. And by looking at above the eyes, below the eyes, the face, so forehead, face, and body, we can figure out what's going on. And when you're examining someone clinically, you'll examine them with a focus on three areas. You'll examine them with a focus on their forehead, you'll examine them with a focus on their face, and you'll examine them with a focus on their body because those are three separate wiring pathways that we can look at. So let's look at the first one. Let's look at the forehead, which we call the upper facial neuronal pathway. So we're starting in the upper part of the face here in the primary motor cortex. And then we have this neuron, which we call an upper motor neuron, which comes down and stops inside the pons. And from the pons then, we have another neuron which comes down and feeds the opposite side of the face. And this switch over, where the first upper motor neuron comes, connects with the lower motor neuron, this is called a decussation. So we say that the nerve decussates, and you may have heard that term, which means it's a fancy way of saying it crosses over. So if we have a lesion in the right primary motor cortex, it will come down and it will actually innervate. It'll actually go into the left upper face, the left forehead. 
So the right part of the brain controls the left part of the forehead. And it controls it because the nerve inside the pons crosses over or decussates and then travels down to the left side of the face. And of course, there's another nerve that comes down and it's above the eyes, the forehead. There's another nerve that comes down from the left <clears throat> and it hits into this same ganglia. So this same little, if you think about you take a train from the upper motor cortex, get off at the station, and then switch to another train, which goes to the other side of the tracks and goes to this side of the face, there's a similar train that comes down from the left primary motor cortex to the same station, and then down, decussates, over to the right side of the face. So keep in mind, <clears throat> we've got two sides of the brain that come down and do a bit of an X and cross over, decussate, to the opposite sides of the forehead. We're breaking the body down into three. We've got body, face, and forehead, and right now we're just focusing on the forehead. And the interesting thing about the forehead is that the messages that come from the primary motor cortex cross down over into the opposite sides of the forehead. It's a bit confusing to talk about both, so let me go back to just talking about one. And what happens is we've got the messages that come down from the right primary cortex controlling the upper face and the left primary cortex controlling the upper face to the same ganglia here. And that goes down to the one side of the face. Now, of course, it also goes down to the other side. But let me just focus on the, the left side of the forehead for a second. Because if I'm really nasty and I take my pathology ray gun and I go zap and I zap here, this is the upper motor neuron from the right primary cortex that's going down to the ganglia and the pons. So if we take a look here, we say we've got an upper motor neuron lesion in the upper facial neuronal pathway. So this is the upper face pathway because it's coming from here. This is the upper motor neuron. This is the lower motor neuron. And I've caused some sort of problem, either a bleed or a blockage, in the blood vessels that feed this part of the brain. And what part of the blood vessels feed down here? This is the middle cerebral artery. This is the um, anterior cerebral artery up here, this sort of half. And this half down here is the middle cerebral artery. So we've got an MCA CVA, the blood vessels feeding this part, have some sort of obstruction which causes a lesion in this part of the primary motor cortex, which affects, obviously, the upper motor neuron. So we've got a lesion. So these signals get blocked. The signals from here saying, wrinkle your eyebrows or lift your eyebrows up or wrinkle your forehead. You don't wrinkle your eyebrows. You wrinkle your forehead by lifting your eyebrows up. Those messages can't get through. So we would have a problem with being able to move the left side of the forehead if it wasn't for this. Because even though these signals are blocked coming from the right primary motor cortex, the signals from the left primary cortex come through and we have a double innervation coming to the ganglia. We don't have double innervation below, but we've got these two instructions to our forehead coming down to this ganglia. And our forehead, in a way, is kind of protected from upper motor neuron lesions because if one of the upper motor neuron lesions, one of the upper motor neurons gets blown, the other one will cover for it, and we will still have good perfusion to our forehead, which is great. However, if we have a lower motor neuron lesion, so here's the upper, upper facial neuronal pathway, with a lower motor neuron lesion. Well, what feeds the lower motor neurons? This isn't fed by the same arteries that feed up here. So if this is anterior cerebral artery and this is middle cerebral artery, down here, the pons and the medulla are fed by the posterior coronary arteries and the, more specifically, the pontine coronary arteries, which feed off of the basilar. So if you remember when we go back to that diagram, <laughs> we've got the basilar artery, which is analogous to the spine, and then we've got the pontine arteries, which are analogous to the ribs. Those pontine arteries come into the pons, and something is going wrong with those arteries, 
which is affecting the tissue in the pons, which is affecting the lower motor neuron. Hopefully that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense if you're going, what is he talking about? Then go back and watch the video from the beginning and watch it a few times and make sure you get the anatomy of the parts of the brain and the anatomy of the blood vessels that feed the part of the brain. So memorize the primary motor cortex, memorize where the pons and the medulla is if you're not solid with that. And then go back to that diagram of the cerebrovasculature, the little circle of Willis diagram with a picture of the guy beside it, and make sure you understand what arteries feed the parts of the brain. You gotta know the anatomy of the brain, you gotta know the anatomy of the arteries, and then you've got to understand this part, which is the neurons that are in the different part of the brain, which are fed by those different arteries. So if you're still with me, great. If you're not with me, just go back and watch it again a few times and make sure you get the bottom of the pyramid solid because we're climbing up sort of a theoretical pyramid here. And if you don't have the base solid, then you won't get this, the further stuff that'll just be wobbly. So if you're, if you're wobbly right now, just go back and work on the base and you'll get it. It's, it's not difficult, it's just, uh, it scaffolds up. So you just got to make sure you understand the basic part.